4.6 billion years ago, the Earth was formed, and that's when it all began. One billion years later, life begins on Earth with the appearance of prokaryotes. 200 million years later, stromatolites first appear and have persisted since then, exhibiting one of the most enduring life forms on Earth. 900 million years later, cyanobacteria first appear, marking an important milestone in the Earth's environment by providing oxygen that would later support complex life. Eukaryotic organisms appear in the fossil record 700 million years later, leading to the appearance of multicellular organisms 300 million years later. The Cambrian explosion occurred 542 million years ago. Most of the major animal phyla arose over the next 30 million years. There was, an there was initially a major diversification of life, including the divergence of chordates, arthropods, echinoderms, mollusks, brachiopods, and several other phyla. Fish first appeared during the Cambrian explosion. The first agnatha, also known as jawless fish, appeared in the Cambrian period as the first vertebrates with true bones. The first jawed fish appeared in the late Ordovician period. These radiated into several different groups, one being the rayfin fish. The earliest rayfin fish appeared in the Silurian period around 420 million years ago. Think of the fish. The fish you're thinking of is most likely a rayfin fish. Rayfin fish include eels, tangs, trout, seahorses, wrasses, antheas, cichlids. Actually, it's probably easier to explain what isn't a rayfin fish. Rayfin fish do not include cartilaginous fish like sharks and rays, jawless fish like hagfish, or lobe-finned fish such as coelacanths and lungfish. Rayfin fishes have several defining characteristics. They have rigid skeletons made of bone. They also have fins that are fully rayed with bony segmented rays that extend from the base of the fin. They have five pairs of gills that are covered by an operculum which is a bony flap that protects the gills. They have a caudal fin that is homocircle, meaning it has upper and lower lobes that are the same size. Since the rayed fins are the most distinguishing feature of ray fin fish, let's take a look at the mechanical properties of rayed fins. The rayed fins provide a simple way of turning force into motion. Forces are applied at only one end of the ray. In a study done by Alvin Madden and Lauder, Rayed fins are observed to provide a balance between stiffness and flexibility, which potentially allows for finely tuned hydrodynamic interaction. The fins are composed of individual ray-like components made of small segmented bony elements called lepidotrichia, which are long thin rays of endoskeletal bone connected to each other with a collagenous membrane. These fins extend into the water and allow fishes to control body position and to generate force. The fins are primarily powered by muscles located inside the body. One design feature of the fins of ray fin fish that is not present in other fish is the active control of the curvature of individual fin rays, giving them control of the curvature of the whole fin surface. In other words, this means the rays form a fan-like design that allows fishes to change their fin area while swimming. These adaptations of the rayed fin, along with the development of the jaw, make these fish an extremely successful evolutionary group. These lionfish provide a very visible example of the rayed fins. Each fin ray is visibly separated by a collagenous membrane, and when they swim, the fish undulate the surface of the fin in order to control speed and direction. Because there are about 30,000 species of Actinopterygii, there has been some difficulty in creating an evolutionary tree or phylogeny for these fish. Much of the difficulty in creating a phylogeny for ray fin fish comes from the disagreement between the fossil record and molecular genetic analyses, which place the evolutionary branch points at times that can be several million years off from each other. Rayfin fish are divided up into two main classifications, chondrosteae, like this sturgeon, and neopterygii. Neopterygii is further divided into holosteae, like this gar, and teleosteae. Teleosts make up the majority of all rayfin fish, as only about 50 species of actinopterygii are not teleosts. You can see the great diversity in the teleost lineage by looking at a coral reef ecosystem, in which almost all of the fish are teleosts. The phylogenies for chondrosteae and holosteae have been well established and supported in the past, so most of the confusion stems from the teleosts, which all developed in a short time period 
and create a bush at the top of the tree in the phylogeny of ray fin fishes that is composed of many evolutionary branches very close together. In a recent study at Yale University, Thomas Neer et al. have attempted to clarify the timing of these branches by combining molecular genetic analyses and fossil records, creating a time-calibrated evolutionary history. In this research, they have examined DNA sequences of nine unlinked protein-coding nuclear genes from 232 species, which they correlated with fossil record time calibrations using several computer programs designed to create a parsimonious phylogeny. A parsimonious phylogeny is one that has the fewest evolutionary divergences, which gives the simplest explanation for how species originated. This picture shows the difference in two phylogenies. The second is parsimonious because one evolution of green eyes is simpler than a convergent evolution in two species. Through their analysis, these researchers have developed a phylogeny for ray fin fishes that is very well supported with both fossil and genetic evidence. This is the phylogeny that Nier et al. developed. This phylogeny shows the early branching off of eels, followed later by such groups as catfishes, trouts, lanternfishes, and the persiforms, which alone include 40% of all bony fish species. This study was published recently, in 2012, so there has been little time for additional research building off of their study, but this phylogeny will likely provide a starting point for many researchers in the future to base subsequent studies on. Until then... Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Dory, no singing. Oh, 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 I love to swim in. Dory. When you want to swim, you want See, to See, I'm gonna get stuck on. now with that song. Now it's in my head. Sorry.